This is the first chapter. I'm sure you can, you can see, all of you can see this chapter. Crop Production and Management. This is the first chapter in your bio. Okay, you have physics, chemistry, and biology. Till seventh, it was science. But now it is split up. And we have biology, chemistry, and physics. So this is your first chapter in biology. That is crop production and management. From the chapter's name itself, you can make out what it is. We're going to deal with crops and how it is produced and how we manage the crops. So let's move on. All living organisms require food. You can see on the slide itself, please concentrate on the slide as well as what I'm saying. Don't get distracted with anything else. All living organisms require food. Obviously, we all require food. Can we live a day without food? Yes, I hear someone saying, no ma'am, we cannot live. We need food. Okay, maybe one day you might say, okay, I don't need food. After maybe at home you might say, you might call, have a fight with your parents and say, huh, I don't want food. For today I'm not going to eat my dinner and you go to sleep. But can you imagine that for the next day? No, not at all. You will feel hungry the next morning and automatically you go and have your breakfast. So we all know that all living organisms require food. Next. We know that plants and animals also require food. Plants, this we have been studying since your third, fourth grade about plants, how they prepare their food and what is their process involved in preparation of their food. Plants can make their own food through photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, as I said, in your lower grades you're learning what it is. Yes, someone is saying, Yes, ma'am, I know what is photosynthesis. Yes, the green plants, they take in carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll and whatever green leaves they prepare their food is stored in the form of sugar, that is carbohydrates, and they release oxygen. A very common thing, the photosynthesis, without photosynthesis, they cannot prepare their food. And mind you, only green leaves can prepare their own food. I hope you have understood. These are things which we know we have been learning since your lower classes. So it's nothing new about it. Yes, I hear someone saying, yes, ma'am, we are learning this. Good. Now, the next part is, why do we need food? Do we really need food? Of course, as I said, we cannot leave. Maybe one day we might starve. Second day, no. We need food. Why do we need food? We need food because we get energy from the food. Whatever we need. We eat the energy. We, we get energy from the food to carry out what? There are processes like this. What is it? Digestion, respiration, and excretion. So we need food because we get energy from food to carry out the processes, the various body functions, such as digestion, respiration, and excretion. Children, you can write down the important points what I'm showing in the slide. There's no harm, you can write it down, you can dodge, uh, you can write the main important points. For that, you can keep a separate book for it, for the online classes. For otherwise, you need a book, a, a, we need a separate book for biology because I'll be giving you notes otherwise. For the online sessions, you can keep a common online session book where you can write down these points. In points you can write, you can write down the important things. But remember, you should read the text after each lesson I do for you. So let's move on. So these, I hope you have understood what I've said till now. When we need food, food should be produced. So we need, as India is a very populated country, we need a lot of food. We need food, how it is produced. It has to be produced on a large scale. So as all need food, we all need food, it has to be produced on a large scale. So now there are various steps for that. How? In order to produce food for a large population, like a country, we need regular production, one, proper management, 
and the distribution of food is necessary. So when we need food for a large scale of our country, in our country we need a lot of food. So there are steps or take to be taken to we should follow it so that we everyone gets food. But even then there are people who don't get food. That is the saddest part. In spite of following all these steps, there should be regular production, there should be proper management, and as well as the distribution of food is necessary. This is important. When a question comes like this, how, what, what are the steps followed to produce food for a large scale? So you need this. These steps should be followed. Now, during the nomadic times, the humans, what do they do? What they have, they used to, what was condition for them? Nobody used to provide them food at their houses or come, you get food, I will provide you food. No, their lives were different as such. You can see an image, I just put up an image. They used to go or travel in search of food and shelter. What do they eat? They used to eat raw fruits and vegetables and starting hunting for animals, obviously. Nobody is going to give them food in their, uh, provide them food in their house. They had a nomadic life and they used to travel for food and shelter. They used to eat raw fruits, vegetables, and they used to hunt animals for food. After a few years, what, what was born? Cultivation started and agriculture was born. So ag cultivation was in, in being and agriculture was born. So after nomadic life, after years passed on, cultivation started and agriculture was born. Now here you can see an image. I'm sure you all must have seen such an image. It's a field, field fifth. What is it? I'm sure you all know it's paddy field. So now this is a paddy field image I've given. I think it's clear for all of you. Now, as I said in the beginning, we are starting with crop production and management. You have to know the definition of what is a crop. What is a crop? When plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale is called a crop. When plants of the same kind are grown, so you can see the image, the same kind are grown at one place, you can easily see in the image, on a large scale, it is called a crop. Definitions you have to learn correctly. You cannot give your made definition unless and until you have the meaning correct, the teachers will give it right. Otherwise, you just give in broken pieces of definitions that will not work out. So you can note down this, when plants, and it's there in the text as well, when plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale, it is called a crop. Now, example, I've given an easier example for you not to forget, a paddy field. You can only see rice plants in it. So I hope you have taken down what is a crop, or if you have the text with you, you can underline that. Here I've given, we also cultivate different types of crop. I've given images, you can see that. Like cereals, like wheat, rice, maize, barley. I'm sure you all know this. This is not very, uh, I mean, it's a very common. It's not that you don't know. Then vegetables, fruits. We cultivate different types of crops, including, what is it? Cereals, vegetables, and fruits. I hope you all are with me. I hope you all are listening. Yes, someone said, yes ma'am, I'm listening. Good. Come back. Now, India is a vast country. Okay, a lot of factors affect when we grow crops. We cannot just stay, go in the field and stand and just throw, eat seed. Come on, you grow up. No, we cannot do that. There are steps followed in it. Okay, there are cropping patterns, you can see. Cropping patterns are there. Okay, when each crop has its season for it to grow. So we cannot take a seed and just go on the field and just go and throw. Come on, the rice, uh, rice crop, 
start growing but come on the wheat crop start growing the farmer cannot do that there are steps followed in it there are practices and activities done by the farmer so each crop each seed or each crop has its own factors for it here cropping patterns can be classified on the basis of season that's what i said each crop has its own season for it to grow let's move on here i've given as i said india is a vast country lot of things affect for a seed or for a crop like climatic conditions like temperature humidity and rainfall so such are the factors which affect a country so each seed has its own season for it to grow you can say i've just given a image you can just see that image what i've said summer during summer season the crops grow during winter season during rainy season so each crop has its own season for it to grow i hope you have understood what i'm saying okay now despite the diversity in india two broad two broad cropping patterns can be classified okay like like one carif crop we have two cropping patterns one carif crop two rabi crop so it is divided into two carif crop rabi crop the crops which are sown in the rainy season are called carif crops so the cropping patterns are divided into two one the carif crops two the rabi crops now what are rabi crops the crops which are sown in the winter season are called rabi crops so this you have to know my dear children you can write it down because normally the questions come here from this and the teacher's favorite we have here the they can ask you the differences between carif crop and rabi crops again i'm saying crops which are sown in the rainy season are called carif crops and the crops which are sown in the winter season are called rabi crops please note down this this is important i'm giving you more about just the differences how you have to write carif crops and rabi crops so you have to write this down okay this is important please take it down carif crops rabi crops carif crop grows in the rainy season those crops rabi crops grow in the winter season i've given the months also the crop is sown in june okay and they are harvested in september we get the full swing in september here rabi crops are sown in october and it the full it's harvested in march please write it down because this is important you have to learn to write the differences like this in boxes then i've given examples there are so many examples my god you must be wondering oh a lot of examples how will i remember don't worry about it just learn three of them correctly you have to know in fact which are what carif crop the examples and rabi crops the examples carif paddy maize soybean groundnut cot cotton rabi we have the examples wheat gram pea mustard and linseed please take this down this is important because we normally ask what are the differences between carif crops and rabi crops you have to know when it is sown which are the months which are the season and the examples for it i think everyone have noted this down yes somebody said yes i heard okay good here i've again just given it in boxes clearly so that you know how to write it down and not only that pulses and vegetables are grown in they are cultivated are grown in during summer season okay here rainy season here winter season but these guys 
pulses and vegetables. Pulses, obviously, gram, peas. Okay, they are grown, and vegetables, obviously, your, your favorite vegetables you have, all are grown. Your favorite, I don't know whether it's carrot, it's tomato, I know which are your favorite vegetables. They are grown in summer season. So you must know when what is grown. You can't write interchange and write. The, uh, the main part is, I don't want you to go wrong and write paddy in rabi and rabi in uh, the wheat in carof. Be very careful when you learn this. The difference is when you learn, you have the first two points, I'm sure it will be easy for you. Yes, I know it will be easy. But the examples part, you might get confused. Don't worry, I told you, learn three correctly. What my favorite is, I will tell you how. It. Paddy, we remember. Cotton also, we remember. Mace, my favorite. Even your favorite, yes. So you learn it like this, paddy, mace, cotton. The easy ones you pick up, which re remains in your head. The other one, rabi, or wheat is common. Gram is also common. Mustard pea is common. Linseed, it depends on how you take it. I mean, whether, it, whether you can remember, please learn. Learn three of them correctly. And here I've given, during summer, pulses and vegetables are also cultivated. As I said, a farmer cannot take a seed and just go and throw in the field and say it to grow. There are practices or there are activities by the farmers for a period, they have to practice this, or their activities, they have to get themselves in to grow a crop. So this, uh, this comes under heading like basic practices of crop production. So cultivation of crops involves several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time. There are a lot of tasks and activities which a farmer takes. He takes a lot of trouble to grow a crop. We get the last result and we have it and we eat it. But we don't know what all this farmer undergoes, what all he underwent to grow a crop. That is why we say, you know, the farmers, they have a great, they take in great pain to grow a crop. It's not easy. But we get the end product and we don't know the difficulties what a farmer undergoes. So these activities or tasks are referred to as agricultural practices. Please, you have to know this, the activities or tasks taken, undertaken by farmers are referred to as agricultural practices. Okay? You and I think, I think more, I think your text is up there. You can see this, you can underline this, you can note down. Anyway, as long as you study this well. As I said, there are steps, there are activities involved by farmers to cultivate a crop. Here are these steps. This is also important. What are the basic agricultural practices that a farmer undergoes? Such questions can be asked. So if it is just one or two marks, you can just write this. Unless and until if a teacher asks you to explain each step. One, preparation of the soil. Preparation of the soil. Then sowing. Third, adding manure and fertilizers. Then we have irrigation, that is watering the plant, protecting from weeds. Weeds, yeah, someone said, weeds? What are weeds? I'm not, what are weeds? Okay, I'll tell you what are weeds. They are unusual and unwanted plants grown along with the healthy crop. So we have to see that we have to protect our crop from the weeds, which are unusual plants. They grow unwanted plants, they grow along with our healthy crop. So we have to protect our crop from them. Then harvesting, then we have the next step that is storage. Okay, preparation of soil, sowing, adding manure and fertilizers, irrigation, protecting from fields, harvesting and storage. Let's move on. I've just given in cycle, you can just note it Note this down, preparation of soil, sowing, adding manures and fertilizers, irrigation, protecting from weeds, harvesting, storage. So this, it goes like this. Please just note this down so that it'll make, it'll be easier. Or you can write one, two, three, four, five, you can do it in that way, or you can write it in this way if it has been asked, as long as you write the correct way of steps. Let's deal with preparation of soil today. The first step before growing a crop. 
the first step before growing a crop is to turn the soil and loosen it. Now you must be wondering, we we'll take the soil and turn it like this and loosen it. Right, most of you must be wondering, we'll take all the soil, hands and loosen it. No, this is done with the help of implements. This is done with the help of tools involved by the farmers. So the most first important step in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it. We have to turn the soil and loosen it. Let's move on. Why do we do this? We have to turn and loosen the soil. As I said, that is done with implement or that is done with the help of tools. Turning and loosening the soil allow the roots to go penetrate deep inside so that the roots can breathe easily. Okay? When we turn and loosen the soil, this helps the roots to breathe easily deep inside the soil. That is why we are doing this, turning and loosening the soil the soil. We have to do this so that the roots can go right deep into it and can breathe easily. That is why you can underline this, you can note down all this in your text, you can uh, note down all whatever important things I'm saying. When we turn and loosen the soil, what happens? We already know that this, there are someone waiting in the soil. Who are the someone? They are the earthworms and the microbes, small tiny microorganisms present in the soil. They are there. So when you turn and loosen the soil, this helps in the growth of earthworms. I'm sure you know earthworms. Yes, someone said, yes, I know ma'am, what are earthworms? Microorganisms, they are present in the soil. And now these earthworms and microbes are very friendly to our farmers. That is why they are called friends of farmers. These organisms are known as friends of farmers. And when you further turn and loosen the soil, they add humus to it. These guys, they add humus to the soil. So this is important. When we loosen the soil, not only the roots can breathe easily or deep in the soil, it helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes. These guys are our fr uh, friends of farmers and they add extra humus to it. Humus is not new. You know what is humus. Yes, I know that you know, but I'm just showing it up. Who are these? You can see an image there. Is it your favorite animal? <laughs> the earthworms. I've just kept the image so you can understand when you loosen the soil, or turn the soil, you'll find it in this format and you find the earthworms there inside, right beneath, and they come up. So what is humus? You have learned this. this is, we have been learning this since your lower grades, but I've just written it so that you can just recall what you have learned. The organic map component of soil formed by the decomposition of leaves and other plant material by the soil organism. Okay, this is what is humus. And this is how the soil will look all, when we turn and loosen. The microorganisms will come up on the top of the soil. These guys, they help for further preparation of the soil. So you can note down what is humus, the organic component of soil formed by the decomposition of leaves and other material by soil microorganisms. Here in the soil, not only these guys are there, there, is mineral, there are minerals, waste, air, are living organisms, dead plants and animals, they get decomposed by soil. So all this are the soil contains. The minerals, the waste, the air. Air is there. The living organisms are there. Dead plants and animals, they get decomposed by the living organisms. So all these nutrients are held and released back to the soil, which the plants absorb. All this constitute, all this is needed by the soil so that the plants can absorb it. The minerals, the waste, the air, the organisms, the microorganisms, they play a great load that leads to humus. They are decomposed, dead plants, and they decompose by soil organisms. And all these constitute, they become the nutrients. Okay, they become the nutrients for the soil, and plants absorb it. This is just what the soil contains. And when, or when, when all of them come together, only then the plants can absorb it. 
he always remember the top layer of the soil only supports plant growth you know that it's right deep the soil is right deep so the plant the top layer the top layer of the soil supports plant growth so for that we have to otherwise if we don't turn and loosen the soil it just remains there in itself so we have to turn and bring back the nutrients below on top of the top layer of the soil then only it will be complete for the soil for the preparation of the soil so we can read this you can see in this on the slide only a few centimeters of the top layer of the soil supports plant growth so turning and loosening brings the nutrient rich soil to the top and the plants use this nutrients now i'm sure you must have understood why we went from the beginning about turning and loosening the soil and why we need this because only the top layer of the plant supports growth and the rest is down so we have to after growing one crop we cannot just remain we cannot leave it just like that leave the field like that we have to prepare and we have to get the below layer on top and to get the a better yield thus turning and loosening of the soil is very important for cultivation of crops i hope you understood why we need to turn and loosen the soil you have to go through the text you will understand i think by now i made it easier why we need it because the main part is the top layer of the soil only supports plant growth by turning and loosening they bring back the below nutrient rich back to the top and the plants get their nutrients let's move on the preparation of soil the preparation of soil is done by something called tilling and plowing the process of loosening and turning of soil is called tilling or plowing you have to know what is tilling or plowing this comes under preparation of soil okay these now this is done you can see how it is done with the help of animals and our dear farmer is there he is using the animals with an implement that tool there and he moves on to prepare the soil so this is done with the help of a plow now plow that is one tool they are made up of wood or iron so what is tilling and plowing this is important my dear children you have to know the process of loosening and turning of the soil is called tilling or plowing definitions are very very important you have to know the definitions so and how it is done this is done by using a plow and plows are made up of wood or iron you can see the image of given the plow is right here the farmer is using he is using one one end is on the farmer's hand the other end is on the round the uh, animal's neck and he is preparing the soil with the help of plow here always remember the soil is very dry always the soil is very dry if the soil is dry we normally go for watering the field before plowing when before plowing the to make this uh, soil a little wet we water it and then we do the process plowing and in the soil there be many break big big pieces which are called crumbs in the soil so we have to break these crumbs we have to wet the soil a bit and then we start the process plowing so the soil is very dry remember and we need to water a little before plowing and there are big big pieces in the soil that is called crumbs in the plowed field we have to break those also with the help of a plank that's also a tool used by the farmer now till there we finished now the field has to be leveled it has to be leveled you can see an image there how it is leveled it is leveled with the help of a leveler okay it is leveled with the help of a leveler the field is leveled for sowing sowing means to we have to we keep the seed ready for sowing the after prepare after doing all stilling and plowing the next process is sowing that i'll tell you that we have to level the soil for the before we get the seeds into the field and that is done with the help of a leveler 
You can see the image, how the farmer is using with the help of a leveler. And again, not only a little watering, we need to add manure also to the soil, so that proper for proper mixing the soil. The soil is also watered before sowing. So here, we have to level the soil, as well as with the help of a leveler. A little of manure is added before tilling the soil. Watering is done, a little manure is added before mixing, and the next process is on. Let's move on. Here are the tools. There are tools I have shown. You can see how it is done, the tilling and plowing, with the help of a hoe, with the help of, what is that, a plow, and there is something called the modern type, the cultivator. Here in this, I, I'm sure already you must have seen your text saying there are a lot of structures given. You just have to know what each one is used for, mean the function of it. The structure, you just have to go through it, just to know how it is done. You don't have to learn exactly, but just you read the structure. But what, what is the use of a plow? What is the use of a hoe? What is the use of a cultivator? You have to know. Okay? You can see the images I've given, a hoe, a plow, and a cultivator. So let's move on. These are the main tools. What are the main tools? Use of preparation soil. Yes, I hear someone repeating. Plow. I hear someone repeating hoe and somebody repeating cultivator. So we need these tools for the preparation of soil. Now we can see what a plow is used for. I said you just have to know what it is used. The structure is given, obviously it's given in the book. You just have to know what a plow is used for. This is used for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop, removing the weeds, which I said the unusual plant, the weeds, and for scraping the soil. So you have to know what are the functions of the soil. These are very important. If a question comes up, you have to know this. That is tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop, removing the weeds, and scraping of the soil. That is the main function of a plow. Now I said the structure is given. Don't get worried. You don't have to panic for anything. You just have to know about it. The implement is made up of, plow is made up of wood and is drawn by a pair of bull or any other animal, like camels or horses. And it contains a strong triangular iron strip called plow share. So now I'm going to describe the structure of the plow. You just have to know it is made up of wood or iron and it contains a triangular iron strip called plow share. Here, I've just given the description. I said again, you don't have to worry. You just have to know what exactly it is. The main part of the plow is a long log of wood, which is called plow shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft. In the other end, is attached to a beam, which is placed, as I said, one end is attached to the beam, and the other end and the bull's neck. One pair of bull and a man is easily operate. They can easily operate the plow. So nothing it is, it's one end is at the farmer and the other end is with the animal. And then the farmer goes on for the preparation of soil. This is just a structure, you just have to know what it is. Now the hoe. Here again, the function. It is a simple tool which is used for removing the weeds, I have mentioned, and for loosening the soil. It has the long rod of wood or iron. This you have to know till loosening the soil. What is the function of a hoe? It's a simple tool which is used for removing the weeds and for loosening the soil. Again, the structure, you just have to know the structure. A strong, broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one end and works like a blade. It is pulled by animals. Farmer and the animals, they play a great role in this. That is why this again, they're saying one end of the, one side and the other end of the animal. So you just have to know the function of a hoe. And the other one, function of a plow. L just read through these structures. Then only you'll get an idea how the soil is prepared. Last, we have the cultivator. So nowadays, what has happened, you can see an image. I earlier showed you an image, a separate image. Now it is done, plowing is done by the tractor driven cultivator. Here what it is, the main use of cultivator, why do we use this? More than plow and hoe, farmers go for this because the use of cultivator 
saves labor and time. So this is the use of cultivator. Nowadays they use cultivator for the preparation of soil that makes the it saves labor and time. So here sowing is there, but this will be done in the next class. So till here, whatever I've said, I've told you about the carrot and rabi crops, how what are agricultural practices. You have to know uh, the differences between the cropping pattern that is carrot crops and rabi crops. Then I've taught you how uh, preparation of soil is done. Why do we need to turn and loosen the soil? All that is important. You have to know all that. And I've got you to the plowing part, the implement used for it. Today itself, read it, go through the points. What I've given, if you have taken down, well and good. Any doubt is there, you can come to me, come to me on my personal minute, on my WhatsApp, okay? You, I've mentioned, I've told you that you can write all the important points in a separate book, an online session book you can keep. The notes will be given. That should be there for a separate biology note. One more thing. Now we have assignments now. For, an assi for assignments, when we give you, you have a separate notebook there. But don't worry, you don't need so thick books. You just have a normal notebook, a biology assignment notebook. So one you have, normal biology notebook, and the other one, an assignment notebook. Now I'm going to give you an assignment. Please write it down. Are you ready with the book? Yes, someone said, yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Okay. Write the differences between, write the differences between carrot crops and rabi crops. Write the differences between carrot crops and rabi crops. I'm sure I have told you when I was teaching that part, I told you have to write this down because this is important. Carrot crops and rabi crops, I have taken it back to the slide. Please note it down if nobody has noted. This should be written in your assignment notebook. The other ones, what you're noting down, please write that in an online, common online session notebook. Whatever teachers are teaching, you can write that, but you need a separate bio notebook and one thin notebook for an assignment notebook. I will do check all this. Whatever notes or assignments we give, make sure you complete it. If you have any doubt, you can come, you can ask to the, uh, you can come in a group, you can ask in the group, or you can ask me personally. We all are there to help you. Don't worry, don't panic. Till everything gets in its right way, till our dear Corona goes away, we will be going like this. I hope you understood all this. Stay safe, God bless, and we'll meet in the next class.